Welcome back to Physics Fundamentals. In this video, I want to talk about uniform motion. This is the point where we branch into what people generally consider to be physics, what people think of when they first think about physics, if they think about anything at all. And specifically here, we're going to be looking at the field of kinematics. which is the study of motion. And in order to talk about kinematics, we need to be very careful and precise about our terminology and our meanings. A lot of the terminology that we use is part of colloquial everyday discussion, although the usage and meanings in everyday English don't always quite line up perfectly with the uh, terminology and notations that we use in the study of physics. So this is something you have to pay a lot closer to attention to than you might think at first glance. All right, if I get my head out of the way, there are five words that I want you to know. Position, displacement, distance, velocity, and speed. I guess for the sake of completeness, I should also include time on this list although I don't think that anyone has any misconceptions about what we mean by time. But the important idea here is that these terminologies seem similar. Right? Position, displacement, and distance are three different ways of talking about where an object is. Velocity and speed are two different ways of talking about how fast an object is moving. And the way we use the terminology in physics we ask the question, does direction matter? Is the value different when you're talking about going to the left or going to the right? Another way we can think about that, for our purposes right now, Is a signed value reasonable? Does it make sense to talk about this as being either positive or negative? That is the key. When we're talking about position, displacement, and velocity, we're going to pay close attention to direction. Moving three feet to the left and moving three feet to the right are different motions. And so it can be the case that that's something that we care about. It can also be the case that all we care about is that we moved three feet. So we have separate terminology for when we do and do not care. Time is an interesting one because as far as I'm aware, there's no such thing as traveling backwards in time. Uh, as far as I've been able to study physics, there is no indication that there should ever be uh, some meaning to traveling backwards in time, no matter how much sci-fi authors love to dream about the possibility. So there's no corresponding yes direction matters when we're talking about time.
Very often, if you're looking at other resources for physics, you'll see these um, quantities, position, displacement, and velocity, where direction matters, referred to as vector quantities. And these quantities, like distance and speed, where direction does not matter, referred to as scalar quantities. That's literally all that terminology means. A vector quantity is one where the direction matters. A scalar quantity is one where the direction does not matter. I think with that in mind, understanding velocity and speed are fairly straightforward. If I say I was driving on I-70 at 65 miles per hour, this is a description of speed. If I wanted to make it a description of velocity, I would have to continue the phrase. I was driving on I-70 at 65 miles an hour traveling in the westbound lane. Now I know not just how fast I was going, but which way I was going. I was heading west, not east. And by adding that extra piece of information, I've gone from talking about a speed to talking about a velocity. We'll do the same exact thing over here talking about displacement and distance. A distance is I drove for 300 miles on Interstate 70. A displacement is I drove westward for 300 miles on Interstate 70. So when you talk about which way you are going, you have a displacement. Position, I think, is a lot more apparent as something different from displacement. Right? Position. I am in Youngwood, Pennsylvania. I am in Youngstown, Ohio. Those are two different places I could be. Those are things we can talk about with a position. For our purposes in this course, that's a little bit hard to uh, quantify, to do things with. So we're going to simplify the model greatly. We're going to think about traveling on a number line. So I've got here zero in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and mark almost got that right, every five meters or so. All right, so there I have my travel. And I'm just on a rail track, and I can move back and forth along the rail track. The position of my car on the rail track at the moment I'm going to refer to as x subscript 0. That is my initial position. Sometimes you'll see that written as x subscript i. 
I don't like doing that for the simple practical reason of my subscript eyes look terrible and are hard to read. So x subscript 0, read as x naught, is the initial x position. It's the initial place where my cart was. And then perhaps I've traveled for a bit. And now my cart has moved over to here. So my initial position was negative 20 meters. My final position Sometimes you'll see that just written as X. Sometimes you'll see it written as X subscript F. But in this case, that turned out to be five meters. My displacement S is my final position minus my initial position. There's a nice formula that's worth knowing. Displacement is final position minus initial position. In this case, that's five meters minus negative 20 meters, which comes out at 25 meters. The distance traveled is literally just the absolute value of displacement. We don't give it a different variable. Distance is the absolute value of displacement. And well, in this case, our displacement was positive. So our distance is also 25 meters. Coming back up to my track for a moment. A positive displacement means going from the left to the right. If we were going the other way, if we had started with our cart way over here at 30 meters and gone back to 5 meters, well, in that case, x naught was 30 meters x final was 5 meters, and our displacement would be 5 meters minus 30 meters, which is negative 25 meters. But the distance we traveled, absolute value of s, is still 25 meters. All right, so the displacement tells us whether we traveled to the left or to the right. In this example, I'm setting up my number line in the standard mathematical convention, negative numbers going to the left, positive numbers going to the right. I could have set it up the other way. That might have been useful. It just isn't in this case. So we just went with it. All right. So in this setup, positive displacement means I moved to the right. Negative displacement means I moved to the left. My next variable is velocity, which we're going to represent using the letter V. And the definition of velocity is displacement divided by time. And I just realized I never wrote down that The variable t means time. So if I have that my displacement was 25 meters and it took me 3.0 seconds to travel those 25 meters, 
then I can calculate my velocity Well, my calculator is happy to tell me that if I take 25 divided by 3, I get 8.3 repeating, but two significant digits, so I'll round it to 8.3. And my units were meters over seconds. Meters per second. When talking about a speed or velocity, you're probably more accustomed to the U.S. customary unit of miles per hour, but it's the same basic idea. Distance, meters divided by time seconds gives us velocity meters per second. And then just like with distance and displacement, speed is just the absolute value of V. In this particular case, we were moving in the positive direction. Our velocity was positive. So our speed and velocity are the same. But if I look at that other formula, or that other scenario where I was moving from the right to the left, right, from the x equals 30 to the x equals 5 point, my displacement in that case was negative 25 meters. And if I say that my time, let's go with the same 3.0 seconds, then my velocity would be negative 25 meters over 3.0 seconds, which comes out as negative 8.3 meters per second. And yet, my speed is the same, 8.3. Why do I keep writing it backwards? Meters per second. So your speed doesn't care if you're moving to the right or to the left. Your velocity does care. All right. So, I uh, think that's probably a good place to wrap up on this. Uh, if you've seen this vocabulary in the past, then this shouldn't be that challenging of a lesson for you. Uh, the formulas we're dealing with, velocity is speed over uh, time, and displacement is uh, final position minus initial position. Relatively straightforward to work with. Uh, as I'm saying, I'm wrapping up, I realized that I forgot one last example, so I'll get my head back out of the way, and we'll take a look at the fact that you can use this formula in the other direction. How long will it take an object to travel 320 meters at a speed of 64 meters per second? So, looking at this, I immediately realized we were talking about speeds and distances, and specifically constant speeds. So I can write that formula, V equals S over T, that we were looking at in the last example. I can write down my variables, V, S, and T. I can notice that I'm asked, how long will it take? That's a time. We want to travel 320 meters, that's a displacement. And we are going at 64 meters per second, that's a speed. So I need to rearrange this formula to get t by itself. And that's definitely the hardest one to do in this arrangement. If I multiply both sides of the equation by t, I will get vt equals s. Or flipping that around, I'll get s equals vt. Some people like using this as the default version of the formula. It's equivalent. 
but this one doesn't have fraction in it, in it and that makes a lot of people happy. But in any event, I'm trying to solve for t. To get t by itself, I need to do one more step. Divide both sides of the equation by v. So t is equal to s over v. s I have as 320 meters. v I have as 64 meters per second. I plug that into my calculator. I get 5.0. And then let me come off to the side here and think about the units. I have meters over meters per second. That's meters divided by meters per second. And remember the rule for dividing fractions. Change division to multiplication. Take the reciprocal of the fraction on the right. Maybe write that as meters over one so that it looks like a fraction and you can see that the meters are going to cancel each other out, leaving you with units of seconds. Do you have to write out all of that algebra to figure out the units? No, not at all. But I wanted to show you that it's a thing that you can do. So if you are looking at a particular problem and you know that the uh, units of time are going to be in seconds. You can write that down. You can just know what it's supposed to be and say that it's going to work. You can go through the algebra if you'd like. You can go through the algebra using pencil and paper. If you are confident enough in your algebra skills, you can go through that algebra in your head. But however it works out, you should double check and make sure that your units actually do make sense. With that, I really am done this time, so thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.